Here's a video to get you ready for the quadratic chapter test. So everything that we did with quadratics, from looking at how we solve them many different ways, from writing different equations, giving different information, that's what this video is going to cover. It's kind of a longer video because I really want to go through a lot of basic skills so that you're ready to take this test. So the first thing we're starting with is just the idea of how the completing the square works. In a couple problems down the road here, we're going to go through and do a little bit more, but I just want to start with the basics. So your basic idea of completing the square is coming up with the constant value that allows you to write it as a perfect square trinomial and then writing it then as a binomial squared. So the way we found the C value, the formula that we talked about in class, is it's always half of the B value squared. So your B value is whatever goes with the X. So for this first one, you take half of 8, or you could think of it as negative, but when you square it, it's going to end up positive. Half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So the first thing you need to be able to tell me is that the C is 16. The second thing you need to be able to tell me is what binomial was squared in order to get x squared minus 8x plus 16. This is just x. If you use whatever sign is here, so this is going to be a minus, and then whatever the square root of 16 is, so the square root of 16 is 4. If you want to check to make sure it works, you can square out x minus 4, and you will get x squared minus 8x plus 16. Same thing for the next one. You will get a decimal with this one, however. You want to take half of 9. Half of 9 is 4 and a half, or 4.5, or 9 halves. And then you want to square that. So 4 and a half squared is 20.25. Or if you want to write it as a fraction, you can definitely use your calculator to get the fraction. It's 81 fourths. And then your binomial is x plus, the reason it's plus is because the sign is plus, 4 and a half, 4.5, or you can write it as 9 halves. That is squared. So that's the first skill, is just getting comfortable coming up with how you complete the square. The next piece is actually going to apply this process, the idea of completing the square with a purpose. And that purpose is going to be to get it written in vertex form. Currently, this is in standard form. To get it in vertex form, we had a series of steps to follow. First is move the constant to the other side. So move that to the side with the y. So you have y minus 6 equals x squared minus 10x. Step two is to complete the square. So now we use what we just talked about. You take half of 10, which is 5, and square it. So that is 25. If you add 25 on the right side of an equation, you have to also add 25 on the left side of the equation. This side, you do negative 6 plus 25. That is plus 19. This side, you need to write as a binomial squared. This is the binomial x minus 5, because you take half of the 10, squared. Last step is to put the constant back. Vertex form has a constant at the end after the parentheses. So my vertex form is x minus 5 squared minus 19. Make sure you get in the habit of then writing down the vertex, because you don't want to miss a little point just because you forgot to finish the problem. When it says identify the vertex, vertex write down next to it that the vertex is 5, negative 19. If you want to check your work with your calculator on something like this, one thing you could do is you could graph your original equation that was in standard form. You could also graph your equation that you just came up with in vertex form. And you should see only one parabola on your screen because they are exactly the same, just in different forms. The other thing you would see is that the vertex is at the point 5, negative 19. Last piece of completing the square is solving. So this is actually going through and getting our answers by solving. We'll talk about different ways to check your work with this. First thing with this is you cannot have a coefficient in front of the x squared that's anything bigger than 1. So whatever number is there, you need to divide everything by that value. So that's how we want to start this problem, is we want to divide everything by 5. And that is going to give us x squared minus 4x equals, if you need to use a calculator, do 80 divided by 5, you get 16. Now we're ready to go through the process of completing the square. First step is to move the constant, but you'll notice in this one it's already moved to the other side, so I don't have to do that. Next step is to complete the square. So we take half of 4. 4 squared is, um, half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So we're going to add 4 on the left and 4 on the right. Next step is to write it as a binomial squared. So it is x minus 2 squared, and this side is 20. Next step, you're solving using a square root. So you're going to take the square root of this side and square root of this side. You're going to get x minus 2. When you take the square root of this side, first thing you want to remember is you have to write plus or minus. The next thing you want to remember is you need to make a factored tree, because 20 is not a perfect square, but it has 4 as a perfect square factor. We're going to write that as 2 square root of 5. And then your last step is to add 2 to both sides. So your final answer is plus or minus 2 radical 5 
plus 2. A couple ways to check your work on this one. Um, one option is to graph, it would have to be in standard form, but to graph the original function, 5x squared minus 20x minus 80 in your calculator. You should see that it crosses the x-axis in two places, and they should be decimals equivalent to this value. The other option is you could go through the quadratic formula and make sure you get the same answers. You would probably get more of a decimal answer, but it would simplify to this, just so you can see that it has two solutions that are decimal values from either the quadratic formula or from looking at your calculator picture. That leads us into using the quadratic formula. Some things that you should know on your test is you should know how to identify A, B, and C. You should know how to find the discriminant. You should be able to tell me if it has one solution, two solutions, zero solutions. Are the solutions real or imaginary? And then finally, you should actually find those solutions with the quadratic formula. So we're going to start by just going through the A, B, and C process, identifying all the parts. So A is 2, B is negative 6, and C is 3. I'm going to find the discriminant because that's going to tell me about the number of solutions, how many they are, and what type they are. So b squared minus 4ac. Now remember, if you're squaring a negative, you actually do not have to type in the negative, especially if you're doing it on your calculator, because when you square it, it'll be positive. Minus 4 times 2 times 3, the formula that I'm using, b squared minus 4ac. Type it on your calculator or do it in your head. You're going to get 12 for your discriminant. You get a positive number. What that means is you have two solutions and they're both real. So when it says number and type, you're going to tell me we have two real solutions. Another thing you can do visually to check that, if you graph this parabola on your calculator, you should see that it crosses the x-axis twice. If it had one solution, it would only touch it. If it had zero real solutions, only imaginary, it would never cross it. Now I'm going to do the rest of my quadratic formula. So just to remind you what it was, it was the opposite of b. So 6 instead of negative 6, plus or minus the square root. b squared minus 4ac, we've already established that's 12, all over 2 times 2, which is 4. At this point, I can enter my calculator. Now, make sure you use parentheses. So you're going to type in 6 plus the square root of 12. Put that in parentheses and divide that by 4. You are going to get a decimal. So 6 plus the square root of 12, and then divide that by 4. One of your answers is around 2.366. And then I'm going to do 6 minus the square root of 12. Divide that whole by 4. So again, you can just go type over your answer, change the positive to a negative, or you could type it in entirely. Your other answer is 0.634. And your graph should match what you see there. What I mean by that is if you graph this parabola, you should see that it crosses the x-axis at around 2.366 and around 0.634. Next piece is just kind of just the part of that, just it's focusing just on the discriminant for a second. So again, the discriminant is the b squared minus 4ac. So being able to use that to tell me how many solutions I have and what type they are. So for this one, a is 3, b is negative 5, c is 6. So b squared minus 4ac, again, I'm not going to even write the negative down because when I square it, it's going to be positive. So b squared minus 4 times 3 times 6 gives me a discriminant of negative 47. What that tells me, since it's a negative number, that means I would get imaginary if I actually did the entire quadratic formula. So I have two imaginary solutions. Visually, if you want to check to make sure this makes sense, if you graph your original equation as just a parabola in your y1, you would see that it never touches or crosses the x-axis. Next one's not in standard form, so I'm just going to do a little work just to get it in that way. I'm going to subtract 7. So now I can say that a is 2, b is negative 1, and c is negative 7. So b squared minus 4ac. And again, use your calculator. When you square a negative, just type it in as a positive because it's, be, it's going to be positive when you square it. You get a discriminant of 57. What that means is when you put this in the quadratic formula, you get two answers, and they are both real. Again, to check visually, if you graph this in your y1, you would see a parabola that touches, crosses the x-axis in two places. So you have those two real solutions. I've got one problem left, and that's one of the more recent problems that we did at the end of the chapter, solving algebraically. So solving a quadratic inequality is what this is called. First thing you want to do is factor it, and I will always make sure I give you factorable problems. So I have x minus 8x plus 6 is how this FOIL factors. 
That means my solutions, I also call them critical values or zeros in class, are positive 8 and negative 6. So on a number line, I'm going to put those two zeros. If you're having trouble factoring it, you can also look at your graph and see where it crosses the x-axis so you get those critical values more visually. I know this parabola opens up because it has a positive x squared, so that means my parabola starts above the axis, goes below the axis, and then goes back above the axis. So we say it goes from the positive y to the negative to the positive. This particular problem wants to know when it is bigger than 0. Bigger than 0 means when is it positive. So it is positive at the ends of the graph. When we write this, you can think of it like a number line. This is an OR statement. This is going this way from negative 6 and this way from 8. So my answer is when x is less than or equal to negative 6 or when x is greater than or equal to 8. The interval notation I taught you, and you don't have to do it here, but it is nice to be comfortable with it, you would say you go from negative infinity up to negative 6. We are including that, so we put a bracket, joined with, or union, 8 to infinity. If this problem would have had the opposite inequality, if this would have been a less than, that's when you want this middle region, the negative region. So you want to see what does my parabola look like. Your parabolas are gonna either going to follow this pattern if it opens down, if your parabola opens down, then it's going to follow the opposite. It's going to start below, then go above, then go below. So it, the only thing that really matters is, does it open up, does it open down? If you're having trouble with that, you're obviously welcome to graph it at any time just to get a visual. And then you want to answer the question, are you looking for when it's bigger than 0? That means you're looking for the positive. Or are you looking for when it's less than 0? That means you're looking for when it's negative.